Hi guys, my name is Sheldine and today's workshop is going to be on how to do this owl in pan pastels and pencils. The main um, materials that we will be doing, and I'll go through the materials in a second, is pan pastels. So the majority of this is going to be done in pan pastels and all just the tiny little details we'll be doing in pencils. So the palette for the pan pastels looks like this. There are 10 colors. I just um, printed them out like this and I'll give this print to you guys if you want to guide if you want to set the palette out in the same way but the palette we have we have the pearlescent yellow um, the colorless blender the black the yellow ochre extra dark Payne's gray extra dark phthalo blue extra dark neutral gray tint yellow ochre titanium white and orange shade so that's the only palette that we need to be able to do this owl. Now the reference of this owl is pretty small, but that is just the reference. We are going to actually put this owl on this entire sheet of paper. So it's going to be pretty huge. So this is an A2, it's bigger than A2. Um, I'd say it's A1, an A1 sheet of the UART 400 sanded paper. The reason we use a sanded paper is because it has a nice texture to it, enough of a texture for your pan pastel to just, it's almost like it, it grips it. It, it, it sticks to the surface really easily compared to something like regular watercolor paper where it will just brush onto the surface and it doesn't sort of have anything to grip on very strongly. So the, the sanded paper brings the pigment out and it's it's got a good grip on it and it allows for multiple layers. Okay, the other tools we're going to be using is we'll be using these soft applicator sponges. Now the brand is soft which is S-O-F-F-T and so if you're looking for them and you look for soft applicator um, sponges make sure you spell soft properly because then you'll find it a lot easier. So we've got four little, they look like little palette knives and then they've got the sponges over the top and these are what we're going to use for the feathers or any details in the pan pastel work. I then have a round oval like applicator um, soft sponge which I'm going to be doing color mixing on here. So I'll show you how we do that. And then we have some various other shape sponges as well. I also have a kneadable eraser. This helps if you just get that excess piece of pan pastel onto an area where you don't quite want it and you can just use the kneaded eraser and just lift it off straight away. So that's a very handy tool to have. And then finally the pencils that we're going to be using is our... <laughs> I have some of my dog's hair on there. The pencils we're going to be using are the Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils. So just a set of 24 pencils will be enough. Um, so that's all we're going to use. And we're going to use this for the details in the eyes and the tiny little details of the soft feathers. So anything where, that you can't exactly get such a fine detail with your um, pan pastels, we will use the pencils to do that. Okay, so that is the materials that we're going to be using today. So I will provide a list of the materials in the description, um, a place where you can download that sheet that I just showed you with the colors um, and all the other information that you'll need to start this for yourself. So I think this is a great little starter project for pan pastels. You don't have to have any experience to be able to do this workshop. This is fine for complete beginners. I'm going to go through everything step by step. But um, you, if you want to start or try pan pastels, but you don't want to buy too many of them, this is a great way to start out just with 10 colors and see how far you can get with an entire image. And then uh, that gives you the opportunity to decide for yourself if it's the kind of material that you would like to uh, invest in. Because it can be quite pricey, but it does last a very long time. So I found, so I've had a, a couple of pan pastels for the past few years now, and I haven't gotten through one of them completely yet, and I use them all the time. So they are going to last you a while, and then you can maybe just gradually build up the colors that you have. Okay. So we've got the L over here, and then we've got this giant sheet of paper. So I want to cover this entire piece of paper um, 
with this owl. So the first thing I'm going to do, and the beauty about doing something like this is that it doesn't have to be exact. All you want to do with an image like this is you want it to look like an owl in the end. That is all. We don't want to get every feather in place and every detail looking the same because in the, at the end of this we want our owls to be ours. It, it needs to be unique and different and that, that's what makes an artwork stand out. So all I want to do, the first thing I want to do is I want to put my eyes down. Once I have two eyes down on this giant sheet of paper, I can sort of just take it from there. So I want to find a spot on my paper where I want to place these owls. Now looking at the reference with where the placement of the owl is. So if I try and imagine a line down the middle, maybe I can show you with a ruler. So if I see a line down the middle of the page, I can see the eyes are right on top of the middle line of the reference. And if I want to see where the middle of the page is in a vertical line, we've got this eye right next to it, the left eye right next to it. So if I can just sort of create an invisible line down the center, I can see that I want my eyes to be placed somewhere over here. And then if I have an invisible line down, vertically down the sheet of paper, I can see that this eye needs to be just on the right of that vertical line. So just to put those a uh, rough sketch down, I'm going to take a pencil. So let me get this tray out. And I'll just put my pencils. Mm, I'll just put them carefully on top of my pan pastels for the moment. <laughs> Okay, so I will use a, a, a light color, but one that's dark enough for you guys to see. So I'm going to use the raw umber number 180, and I just want to get a, a rough sketch of the placement of the eyes. So I know that from my reference, uh, I can sort of see that this is the middle of the line and this is the the horizontal middle of the page and the vertical middle of the page so I want my eyes to be let's just put a dot in the center of where I want my eyes to be so there's one and then I'd probably have it you can decide how far apart you want it because um, so if the ear is going to be there so maybe not quite that far apart I'll put that over there so now I have that spot there that I don't want, and this is the great thing about um, a kneaded eraser, is I can just take my kneaded eraser and I can lift that right off of this paper, if you do that with this paper. If you just use regular um, watercolor paper, it's not going to be quite as simple to, to remove it like that. Now, if you have too much dust on an area. Where did I put it? There it is. <laughs> like me, my I can never avoid my dog's hairs. But if you have any excess on your page, just take a brush like this, a big brush, and wipe it off. Don't wipe it off with your hand, especially on sanded paper, because it's not going to feel that great if you do it that way. Okay, so I found the two center parts of my eyes. So now I want to I'll keep my reference close by so that I can see the shapes of what I'm working on so I can see that the top of the eye isn't quite round it's got a bit of a an angle there and then it goes down like down like this So I am working from the left side of my page. You probably will find it easier if you're working from uh, with it directly in front of you. Um, this is just for the purpose of my camera setup. It's just the way that it's sort of working out. Okay, and then this eye. So trying to find out how far the eyes are apart. So I can see I've made my eyes 
too far apart like that's like two whole eyes apart from each other whereas this the reference shows about an eye so my eyes either need to be bigger or they need to be closer so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my kneaded eraser get rid of this one and bring it closer So I'm actually glad that I'm doing this on camera because it shows you guys just the sort of things that you you have to observe. So the eye is probably about here. So as you gradually add sort of reference points on your drawing, then that is how you start noticing things that need to be adjusted or changed. That's better. This is more rounded here. It's not quite as abrupt. So, like that. Get rid of that center line. And I zoom in for you. This is also a little more rounded, not quite as squared. I apologize if you can hear the <laughs> pretty good. Now I want to put that sort of feathery shape above the eye. So I just want to establish the important lines that I need and then we can jump in with the pan pastels. Now don't worry about your pencil marks because it's pretty easy. The minute you apply your pan pastel over the top it's going to smooth out the pigment that you've put down from your pencil core if you're using this paper so um, don't worry too much about your pencil lines they will they will blend in with your pan pastels they're not going to uh, stick out underneath the pan pastels like they do if you're just using colored pencils so now for the beak you can almost decide for yourself how large you want the beak you could exaggerate the beak a bit more if you wanted to to make yours look different or you could make it more rounded be creative so that's the beak and then we know that we can see uh, i think my beak needs to be a little bit more centered <laughs> it's not quite in the middle of the eyes a bit more sensitive. I think I'm going to go for a bit of a wider beak compared to a narrower one. There we go. And then when we put these shadows in underneath the beak, it's going to give the shape of the owl's face a bit more dimension. But what you could do with your pencil is that you see these shapes around here. So it almost looks like a rectangle almost around the owl's face. So you could actually just put small indications of that shape. That's somewhat rectangular. Rounded rectangular shape. Over here. Great, and then just above the eyes here, you see there's almost like a V shape. So these are just pointers for your eyes to recognize as you apply the pan pastels to them. And then we want to create 
this shadow just an indication of this sort of u-shaped rounded values just underneath the beak area I want to say the owl's chin okay and then let's do those cute little I want to call them ears <laughs> Oh, and this reference photo is actually a stock photo, so uh, you can buy the license for it on iStock Photos. So this was just a quick one that I grabbed because I thought it would be a great example in a workshop. Um, so I can see that the, the start of this part of the ear is actually just above this mark here. Whereas I've put it all the way over here, so I need to re replace where I put those completely. So that's only starting here. Not one here. It's better. one but uh, I will put the link to where you could get the reference photo as well Okay, creating that rounded shape over there, the top of the, this is going to about there. Beautiful. And then the only other thing that I want to establish. So I just want to know where this wing is going to sort of start. So I'm going to put this shape in here. And again, you don't have to get these feathers right because once you have a particular pattern, you would be able to get enough information from it. So I'm actually going to extend the top of this much more than what you can see in the reference. So I'm going to pull this up further on my drawing. And I like the flow of the feathers because it's almost it's leading you to the head of the owl. It's, it's just moving you right there. And if you make them even bigger, it's going to create even more of that flow of direction to the eyes of the owl. Okay, now I can sort of see where that line is going to be which comes just to the sort of bottom area of there we go. so I wanted to know where this ends over here so I can see that it's just below the sort of middle horizontal line it would be a little bit further there and 
Then we can have all these soft fluffy white feathers which we can easily do there. Now with these uh, areas here, all we want to do is just put a indication of the shape of the, this in here. We don't have to put these, draw these feathers in. We just want that shape there. And then there's also a wing. In this area here. Okay. There we go. It's very subtle, but that's all you need for your outline. That's how easy it is just to get your your outline in there and I think this is gonna be real fun because I'm gonna be doing this um, the same workshop with a class uh, in a couple of days and we're just gonna be a class a nice intimate class of seven and um, I'm, I'm so excited to see what the owls are gonna turn out to look like but before this video will be available um, to everybody over on the pan pastel YouTube channel I first, I'm going to do the workshop first, so by the time this video has ended, if you're watching it now, you should be able to see how everybody else's owls turned out in the workshop, so I'm really excited for that, I think it's going to be pretty cool. Okay, so that's it for the pencil for now, so I'm going to put the pencils aside, and now we're going to start applying the pan pastels. I'm going to put my kneaded eraser aside, so that's a very, very nifty thing to have available. And just have a drink of water. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, this video will be available to all of you in real time, so you're literally seeing every second of it done um, in real time. Nothing is going to be sped up or edited or anything. What you see is what you get, and this is a process that um, I'm going to be taking with this out. So I'll, I'll be having my reference photo hover around everywhere so that I can show you what exactly I'm focusing on um, at what time of the drawing. So I think we're going to start off with the eyes, I think. So I would like to use some of... Let, let's block in the, the pupils and the dark rings around the eyes. No, actually, let's not do that. So I'm going to take my orange shade which is this one and I am going to use this applicator sponge which is like an oval like applicator and I'm going to use that to, that I'm recording with. The only downfall about that camera is that it only records for about 11 and a half minutes at a time so I have to re-record every time you hear that so I apologize for that. Okay, so go and do the other eye. See, it's so easy, and I hope that you can see how um, pigmented and, and bright it is. So it, the paper really grips it. The only thing that you will notice if you are using this paper, it is going to eat through your sponge applicator. So you're probably going to need about two, maybe, maybe three. Um, if you are going to be applying a lot of color or using the same applicator sponge because you are working on a sanded paper and you're rubbing on it it is going to sort of start um, breaking apart your sponge so but that's okay it's easy to to just replace that but if you're going to get these sponge applicators because you just have to buy the palette knives once and then you can buy little packs of all these um, extra sponges to replace it with. Okay. And 
you don't even have to be that neat. I mean, look, this eye, I didn't exactly round, round it off very neatly. But it doesn't matter. There's so much room for error. You can just keep fixing and adjusting constantly, which is what I love about this stuff. So that's quite dark. So we want to add a little bit of a highlight. So I'm going to use my... Let me just keep this close by to me. Um, so I'm going to use some of the yellow ochre, which is over here. So you saw how I... So if you look at the top of the screen, I have the little palette there. But... I literally just dab it and then apply it so just to the sort of around this around the pupil just adds that extra bit of color and the same with this one and then I'm going to take some of that beautiful pearlescent yellow and go over the top. Now you would have seen I, I don't really clean the sponge off but if you if you're going to dip it into another color and you want to I uh, you want a clean sponge all you do is you take a piece of paper towel oh dear. I just dropped that <laughs> I have a whole roll <laughs> you just take a piece of paper towel like that and then you can clean it off so just wipe the wipe the pan pasta like that and then you can apply your other color to it so the pearlescent yellow it's so beautiful it's almost going to help bring out that glow in the eye it literally has a shimmer to it I picked that color in this palette purely for that <laughs> Just for the eyes. And it's, it's just so nice how these colors apply on top of each other and they just blend in flawlessly. And there's no limit to how many times you can layer that. One thing I will show you later on though, is that if you are, you want to do a lot of layers, so let's say I wanted to layer that another three times over exactly the way that I did, you're going to have to seal it with a fixative, and the fixative will then seal in whatever is at the bottom. So if you don't want something to change, so let's say I've done this part of the eyes now and I don't want them to change at all, then I will seal it with the fixative and then it, it's sealed in, it won't move around anymore and once the fixative's dry you can layer on the top of that and you don't have to worry about moving any of the colors below it. Um, speaking of that, I forgot to mention that the fixative that I like to use is the Micador fixative, it's a workable matte fixative and it says clear permanent protection for pastel chalk, charcoal chalk and pencil work. So I really like that fixative a lot. So that's an option for you guys. The only thing is make sure that you have enough ventilation in the room because it does have quite a bad smell. It dries pretty quick and the smell does disappear quickly but the extra ventilation is very good. And if you can step out of the room when you do spray it, that would be better as well. After you've sprayed it. <laughs> okay. So I'm okay with that. Now what I'd like to do is take my triangular applicator sponge and I'm going to use the Thalo Blue Extra Dark, which is this middle blue in my palette here. So I, you will have a print out of these colors that, like I showed before, which I, I literally just made like this. So you'll have that available as well. So if you set out the palette in the same way, 
um, you will be able to see which colors I'm using without me having to say the color but I will I'll continue to say which color I'm using but um, if you're uncertain then you can just check it out that way so now I want to apply that to the pupil of the eye So because I, I won't be editing this video afterwards, um, that's also another reason I, I want you guys to know exactly how the colors are set out here, because I'm not literally going to have it listed on the screen. This is such a beautiful color. Thalo Blue and Payne's Grey are it's like two of my favorite colors to use for darker values. Oopsie. So I just sort of dropped my applicator sponge. But if, if you had to accidentally get a whole blue line across it, it would be easy enough for you to apply your... Uh, I'll do that as an example. So let's say you accidentally did that. You could take your um, previous sponge, apply the pearlescent yellow over the top, and use the color. <laughs> So it is, it sort of made that a little bit green, but that's okay because you, if you keep layering with that color over the top, it's going to eventually fix it up. And that's actually, that's actually a good color to bring in there. It's always good to use whatever colors, surrounding colors you have um, into your main it, it, it's what I'm trying to say is that if you utilize your colors that you're using let's say a little bit more in the background but you use, utilize them as well in the foreground or in the main subject of what you're looking at or the focal point it brings more balance to it as well so and now if I wanted to get that m even more yellow so I will seal that in with a fixative and then that color is not going to mix anymore. So when I apply the pearlescent yellow over the top again after the second layer, which we'll do once we put in these dark bits, then I'll show you we could get it yellow again instead of green. Because the phthalo blue mixed in with the orangey yellow colors, it caused it to create a sort of green look in the eye. And now you can see... Um, I can't apply more of the phthalo blue, it's sort of moving around, so I have to seal it in. But before I do that, I'm going to use the very tip of this triangular sponge and try and get in that very dark outer sort of border of the eye, the iris. So if you're using the tip of the sponge, you've got a little bit more control. have any excess just blow it off so 
So you see, I won't be able to go too much darker than that because it's going to start moving around. So I have to seal it in first before I can uh, do any more about that. Try and get that square off the screen. constantly looking at my reference it's actually good to have the the DSLR and because it, it makes me just stand up for a few seconds after every 10 minutes because time just goes and then the next minute you realize you've got some aches and pains because you haven't been moving around much so a blessing in disguise okay so if i want to make that even darker or i want to make the yellow stand out more then i am going to need to seal this in first so make sure that you just cover everything up that's around you and I'm going to shake my fixative and just spray it over the eyes I only need it over the eyes, I don't need it anywhere else because we haven't applied the pen pastel anywhere else now this doesn't take too long to to dry so just let it do that. While we let that dry, actually, maybe we will add a bit to the beak. So I'm going to use the phthalo blue again. Those little extra bits and pieces you see jumping around is my sponge because it does wear on the, the sponge. So there's no need to press hard. And then I'm going to take some of the Payne's Grey, extra dark, and go over that. And then that's about as far as I'd be able to go, and then I'd have to seal that in as well. So I will be able to add some dark colors there. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually use some of the black in the pupil of the eye it around the sides as well now usually when I use black I like to use it on top of an existing color so that the black doesn't end up being completely flat so it is still mixing in with the color that's already been placed down and then it's not it's just gonna look like a black hole in a sense 
So, and I like to use the other way around as well. So I put black down and then I put another colour over the top. Just to enforce that balance. Beautiful. It's going to be, look pretty cool now when we add those, that yellow back into the eye. Beautiful. Now I'm going to clean this sponge off just a bit and then take the pearlescent yellow See how much brighter it is now? Because we've sealed in the bottom layer, it's, so they, it's not moving the bottom layers around. And then I think I'm going to use some of the yellow ochre. Beautiful. Now, there's a very nice bright orange in the eyes that I'd really like to bring out, but I don't have the pan pastel color in that color because we're only using this palette. But we have some nice colors in our pencil set. So we're just using the set of 24 pencils. It's the Faber Castell Polychromos pencils. And I'll bring the tray out again. So the only real detailing that I'm going to be doing in this entire image is the eyes and the beak and maybe a little bit on those like eerie parts of the owl. So I have my pencils over here and I think I'm going to use the uh, dark chrome yellow number 109 and if you pay close attention to your reference there's almost this like rounded squiggle within the eyes. So you can create little rounded sort of areas. And you can also use this pencil to help define that very rounded inner line of the eye because it is a very geometric sort of line.
then you could take the uh, Cadmium Yellow 107 and there's a very bright yellow right around the pupil. Which makes it sort of look glowy. You can bring that out a bit more. And you can lightly apply some of it around here as well. Again, use, use little squiggles. It gives a little bit more texture and dimension to the eye. And it's going to start looking like it's glowing. And to make it look like it glows even more, you got to emphasize that beautiful deep orange now. So now we can use the dark cadmium orange number 115. I'm paying attention to my reference. I can see those those glowy orange areas. So constantly look at your reference. And I'm creating soft little squiggles. I'm not putting any pressure putting very very little pressure now I will apply a bit more pressure so that I can get a darker value so just along here look at your reference if you're wondering why I'm doing something in a particular way have a close look at your reference and you'll see that this light there is a darker orange over here. So that is why I'm applying it in that way. Just shading in the darkest part of the pupil. The top will be more of a blue. And then let's do the, the very strong outer eye. I'm not sure what to call it. The to rim. And you may be wondering, why don't you just do the whole eye in pencil instead of pan pastel? You can. You can if you want to. But the whole point of this is to show you how pencils and pan pastels can work together. And this is the only detailed part, um, which we need uh, pencils for because we can't get as fine a detail with the pan pastel. Also, we only have a limited range of 10 pan pastels, so those extra pencils just helps me get in those extra bits of colors that I don't have in the pan pastels. Now I do have the whole set of pan pastels, 
but you may not so we making sure to keep this limited to just this handful of materials when we start adding those nice soft feathers around the eyes it's going to really bring those eyes right out And you don't have to make your eye, the eyes orange, you could make them blue if you wanted, or green, or whatever color you want. Okay, that's good enough. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to use some of the Helio Blue Reddish number 151 and apply that blue just on the top bit of the eye. The eye, the pupil of the eye. Light Ultramarine 140, and we're going to put in those highlights. And then, watch this. This is like magic. <laughs> so now we're going to use the white and go over those areas with the brightest highlights. And it's going to make that eye look like an eye. And then I think I even want to go just a little bit over that yellow around the pupil to make that seem like a stronger highlight and then you can also add a little bit of the white to add more texture to the eye If you want stronger highlights, just add a stronger amount of the white. Okay. Beautiful. Now, I want that to stay like that. So, I'm going to seal that in with my fixative. Sorry about that. Okay. So, now we are going to seal that in. Take your bottle. Just like that. Let that dry. And then we are going to start with the feathers. So while we're letting that sort of section dry, Let's go on the side here. So let's add these values on the side here with the pan pastel. So we're not worried about those little black parts in the feathers. We just want to get those values down. So I'm going to use the square applicator sponge. And what you can do, okay, let me show you how to mix. 
So if you have a sponge like this, a round sponge or just any sponge that has a fairly big surface, like this one, Let's zoom out a bit, like this one, you can mix on it. So I'm going to take some of the yellow ochre extra dark and apply that to the top and some of the orange shade and mix that into that. So orange shade and I think I'm also going to take some of the neutral grey tint. So that's how you can mix colours up to get different variations with a small palette and then I want to use the side of my sponge to start applying these areas here around the face of the owl actually let's use a bigger sponge so I'm gonna use this square sponge here. If you have a dirty sponge then all you do is you wipe it off. I did wipe this off earlier so nothing's going to come off of it now. And you can mix with your sponge pretty much like you did. So we're using the yellow ochre extra dark, some orange shade and some of the neutral grey tint. And we want to put that value in there. Now this is also really nifty, so we've got a colorless blender in here. So if you take the colorless blender and you want to spread this out further, you can just apply the colorless blender and push whatever you've got down already, you can make it go even further, if that makes sense. So let's say we were here and I don't really want that to go too much further but let's say I wanted to make that go further I've still got colorless blender on here but there's a limit to how far you can take it and the colorless blender just helps you extend it even more so this is also great if you're going to do skin tones or something Okay. so if you see me dip into that um, it looks like white but it's not the titanium white's down at the bottom this one is the colorless blender so I just want to continue using the yellow ochre extra dark sort of push it out and here okay there's some over here so I'm going to use some of the grey and the yellow ochre. the grey and the dark yellow ochre not too much so add more grey
use the sort of straight tip of the sponge to go over or around the eye. Okay, I want to start mixing in my white because the there's nice white tones here but my paper isn't white so I want that white to show up and when we have the white around the eyes show up nice and clearly it's going to make the eyes pop out even further so I'm not worried about textures or anything right now it's just value I just want to get the like if you're trying to break out the layer like the very bottom layer of something over here then you are not looking at the details you're just looking at the values so using whites still have some of that grey in my sponge and that's fine and just carefully guide your s the flat edge of the sponge around the eye so that you don't get into the black area and even if you do it's easy enough to just um, use your pencil again to just get that straight black line back in again Now, if I wanted to that, that to be even whiter, I'd have to seal this in because I won't be able to get that even lighter now. See, that's really blending in with the grey, so add some of the grey here. So I'm using the flat tip of the brush. like to use the grey and the white down here too. Some of the uh, yellow ochre extra dark here. Next to the beak. And underneath it. Here. Okay. Cool. Do you see how it's starting to take shape? It's starting to form something. 
Um, okay, so again, I'm going to use the dark, the yellow ochre extra dark, and um, go into. fluffy ears, some of the blue, the uh, phthalo blue, extra dark, yellow ochre and the phthalo blue can go in here. Okay. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just getting like an underpainting done. I'm using, I'm still using the straight edge of the sponge, like, to, we're working with feathers so you can make them wispy strokes. White and grey. More white. White. top of the head here is pretty white with sort of bluish grey tones. So the phthalo blue and the Payne's grey would be good colours for the dark feathers on the head. So I'm just applying white now. Now I'm going to go and apply those white areas pretty much everywhere. So this, this whole bottom wing here, I would like to apply the white because I don't want the color of the paper to come through anyway. I want to completely seal the color of paper. So I'm going to add white over here um, for now and we'll see how we go. So let me zoom out so you can sort of see the whole thing. And bring that down a little. So you can see that the size of this is, is big, it's nice. So I want to work on this part of the wing here. So I'm going to apply, and maybe over there as well, I'll apply the white. going all the way from there. So use the whole side of your, your sponge to cover more. Let's take this out. The bottom, I'm sort of going to make it sort of fade into nothing. 
because I'm going further than my reference. So this is the line where my reference ends, but I'm going further than what my reference shows me. So I'm just gonna have whatever is further than what my reference shows me is just going to end up being just a softer, softer space where this color just extends into, into nothing. I know you probably can't see much of the white that I'm applying now but as it gets whiter and more pigmented you'll see it more definitely. to reach right over to get that end. Okay. That's good. That's good. Now I'd like to apply these sort of darker areas here. So I'm going to use the yellow ochre extra dark and the orange shade up here and now Dipping into both, need more of that one. This is going to be a good, so I want to extend this color out to it here, but I don't want to change the colors too much. So I'm going to use my colorless blender and see how far I can bring these colors out. Oh my gosh, the colorless blender is like magic. This stuff's insane. This is actually the first time I'm having a play with a colorless blender. Brings it all right across. Wow. Nice and soft. Beautiful. I'm 
loving the look of it already. Okay, so that's that. Now, let's put that one away. And we're going to be using more of the yellow ochre extra dark here at the bottom with the grey, with the neutral grey tint. So those two. Now I'll just clean this off. So looking at this area here, can go further. Then I'm going to use the colorless blender to bring these areas together a bit more. Use the white, lighten up some areas here. So now we want to sort of get some shapes in over here. So I think what I'm going to use for that is I'm going to use this round one and then I'm going to sort of just use the shape of it to create these grey sort of feathered textures and all I'm going to use for that is the grey, the neutral grey tint. sort of going like this it doesn't have to be perfect we just want to get a general shape of the feathers so that's kind of the thing that's happening here Texture this side. And 
you see that? Make it wider. All you have to do, you just have to be observant with the shapes that you see. And then you use those shapes. And it just, it gives you flow. It's, it's giving, it's forming a sense of direction. So you know that there's feathers that are going upwards. You don't know where to or how, but they're going upwards. What's causing them to look like they're going upwards? It's the direction of the pattern on the feathers. I'm just going to continue with that pattern all the way. I'm not even, I'm, I'm looking at my reference, but I'm not sort of trying to get it exactly the same. I just wanted to, to kind of get there. looks very pink <laughs> in this video. Okay, and then this side, they almost look wider and more circular. Spreading out like a, I know they have, look like little spots next to each other. that how cool is that so we've created a flow that's and it's all oh, there's so much movement in it it just draws you straight to the eyes which is what you want exactly what you want okay now Now I want to do those little like U-shaped patterns almost. So I might just use this triangular sponge and use the uh, orange shade and the yellow ochre extra dark again. So just dip it in both and then create
just little patterns in between those grey sort of overly shapes that you put down. Uh, I don't know if I want to use that one. Let's use the square one again instead. Yeah, that's better. Corner. Can you see what I'm doing? I'm just sort of going in between those shapes. Because it just it just looks like little little rounded rounded ovals and rounded rectangles. That's what it looks like. So we want to do that without getting too particular about details. And these shapes are even more rounded. And it's pretty dark in here. Okay. Now, they're just in between the, these feathers here, like there's an indication of um, green there. So I'm going to use some of the yellow ochre extra dark a smidge of the phthalo blue extra dark and then the yellow and that should turn it into green which it does 
I'm just gonna give that put that indication of a green in the background there. Now with the um, the bottom, move this down a bit more. There we go. So I'd like to use. I'll probably just use this rounded like sponge and my colorless blender. And I want my colorless blender to blend whatever colors I have at the bottom to sort of fade them in. I want to blow off any excess just so that uh, when we seal it in now we're not going to seal any of those extra little um, dark bits that may have flooded around and then um, just before we do that I'm noticing a few things. I just want to get a darker shadow in here. That's better. And before we seal that in, actually, take let's take advantage of some of the other patterns in here. So I'm going to use the uh, Payne's Grey. Uh, I'm just going to flick some little textures in here. Just so that it's a little more clear where, that, where the end of the head sort of is. side here okay that'll do for now Before we get to the fixative, I'm going to use the black and just apply a bit more to the beak here. Okay. Beautiful. Now I'm going to spray all of this and then I'm going to leave the room for a few minutes.
while that dries because I'm spraying so much. Um, I'm just going to close my palette over here so that the um, fixative doesn't get on there. And then I'm just going to move some a few things out of the way. I don't want the fixative to get on everything. Okay. I especially don't want it to get on my cameras. I'm just going to spray and help it vent a bit more. I do have a big window right next to me, wide open. Sealing it all in properly. Okay, so I'm going to leave that for about five minutes and then I'll be back. Okay guys, so I did say that I'm going to just step away and let it dry with the um, fixative but then I ended up having lunch and I ended up doing a couple of other things and now I'm already into my next day. <laughs> so I'm going to continue on. What we managed to do here yesterday was just took us um, less than two hours. I'm not sure how quite how long but it was less than two hours so it was really quick to really get such an amazing result and it looks beautiful I, I love it I walk back in now and I had a look at it and I'm like wow it, it's it just feels so flowy and so pretty and the fact that we managed to do that so quickly is, is, is so much fun because now we're going to end up with an artwork that is it's so big I mean this thing is massive and it, it's so beautiful and it's really gonna stand out and to have this in your home or to give it as a gift is um, it's just a beautiful little piece of yourself that you've enjoyed doing because it hasn't taken a chunk out of your time but it's still been enough time for you to really enjoy the process so I had so much fun with this yesterday so I'm excited to keep going today and we will get it done so I'm aiming for maybe another two hours um, maximum to try and, and get this finished. Like I said um, before, that the only detailing really that we're going to do is the eyes and the beak with pencils and then maybe some of the fine little um, like feathery, furry bits that are sort of going over the beak and maybe a tiny little bits on the head. But apart from that, everything's going to look very soft and flowy and we're just going to use our pan pastels for that. So that's the whole point. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the beak in colored pencils and then we will start just literally just finishing the face. So we're going to get into the face with pan pastels and pencils and get the whole face done and then we will move on to all the feathers that are around it. Okay, so let me zoom into the face. Okay. 
And let's see how much we can get done there. Ah, look at those eyes. So those eyes sound, they look so bold and wise, like they can see exactly what you are or who you are. <laughs> Okie dokie. So let me get my pencils. Put this back here. Put the palette in the screen again. So I'm sort of going to just keep my reference nice and close. So I can see it all the time while we're working. Just probably leave it about here. Okay, I've got my pencils. Ready. So I think what I'd like to do is sort of the same as what we did with the pupil. So we're going to put black at the bottom of the beak and then have it go into a nice blue. And I'm not too fussed about the white feathery bits over the beak. I'm going to do the entire beak just like that um, because it's easy enough when you're using sanded paper. If you use a lighter pencil, it will show up over the darker pencil. So we'd be able to get those soft pieces of um, uh, feathers over the beak quite easily with a white pencil. So just using the black, I want to make sure I'm defining the edge of my beak nice and clearly I mean if you end up going over your beak accidentally with the pan pastels or something it's it's this easy to just get back in there and pop a few details back in if required so it seems like it's quite dark on this side of the beak and this side as well And I did make my beak a little bit wider than what I can actually see. I didn't make it too narrow and that's just because I, I think I like the look of having a bit of the wider beak. Now I'm going to use the Helio Blue Reddish number 151. And sort of continue on with the black, from the black upwards. like that and then add some blue on the side here because the beak is curved so we still want to make it look curved Beautiful. now what I'd like to do is take a light blue so let's use light ultramarine 140 uh, I can see there's sort of like a, an arch on the top of the beak here, which sort of goes like that, and then a soft sort of subtle highlight down here. And even a very subtle bit of the blue on the edges here. That's also going to help make the beak look, look a bit more curved. Beautiful. And then I'm going to use some of the white just for that really nice um, textured part on the beak. Emphasize that highlight a bit more as well here. Slide it there. There we go. Now, as we continue with the highlights, uh, with the values and that, with the feathers underneath and around it, it's it's going to look um, it's going to look very nice. So that's all I want to do for the pencils there. Now we'll get back into the pan pastels.
So around the face it is lighter. So I want to enhance those white sort of tones. So looking at my reference, it's quite light over there. And I'd like it to be even lighter. So there, it's almost like a, a cool gray sort of color. Oopsie. So I'm going to use the, the titanium white. And just bring more of that. And you can use whatever little sponges you want. Like, um, it's... You sort of just have to pick one and just go with it. There's no, you don't have to use any specific ones. So, like if I feel like I need to get a narrower texture, I sort of just tilt my sponge to the side and use the long edge of it to create that softer sort of textured look. That's great. I'll do the same over here. Right. Um, now what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to mix it very lightly. So I've got this side of this round sponge. I have wiped it off a lot so this color shouldn't have too much of an effect. But I'm going to use the white and I'm going to use a tiny bit of the phthalo blue extra dark. Because there's this sort of blue gray texture in some of those pieces of fur and it needs to be very subtle because it's starting to get really worn now um, I might just do that now so all you do is you can turn it around use the other end that end so using the white it 
taking advantage of the shape of these applicator sponges for the feathers. So that side of the face is darker, there's more light this side, not that much light on that side. So we won't be applying quite as much of the light that side. Now I'd like to mix up a bit of the uh, yellow ochre extra dark and the orange shade and work a little bit more on these values here. Again, I'm going to use the side of my applicator sponge to make it look like it's sort of underneath. <laughs> that makes such a difference. Okay. Again, using the side. And It's starting to build up beautifully. Take advantage of excess that's left on your sponge just to almost create like a glaze almost in some areas that 
require just a hint of more colour. Now, let's do the the ears. So I'm going to use black, and I'm going to use my pointed the triangular applicator sponge. to create some details attention to where any darker shadows are Beautiful. Now I'm going to just, with the point of this applicator sponge, mix up the uh, yellow ochre extra dark in the orange shade. More orange shade to go in between. Uh, let's use some yellow ochre.
gradually build up some of those areas. Now I just want to build up more texture. So using the excess left on my triangular applicator sponge. Use this oval um, applicator sponge, but I'm going to use this bottom, this side. So I'm going to apply it to the black and the phthalo blue, and put those dark um, feathered tips on. Still paying close attention to my reference because I still want to get the directions of the feathers going in the same, in the right direction, even though I'm not too fussed about the particular details of it. So now we can do that here as well. Has the, the ear looking like feathers? Enhance some of the shadowed values. Just 
so that it's, it's almost just clear. You can see exactly the shape of the face just by getting the values right. put some of those these feathers here so I'm going to utilize the shape of this applicator sponge because it's the right shape for these bottom feathers There's a lot of nice amount of depth in the face already, which is great. Starting to wear through. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to mix some of the blue and the grey. a bit more variation to the, the dark feathered colors. Now I'll use this round sponge again and just come in with the grey and the white. And go in between some of this.
use the side of my sponge to sort of blend this in upwards. I like that so much. Looks great. Great. I'm going to start off with my white pencil. I'm just going to sharpen it real quick. Excuse the noise. Okay, so a nice sharp white pencil. And I'm going to start bringing those. Let me zoom in even more. You can see exactly how I'm doing the beak. Constantly looking at my reference. I know I say that all the time, but it's very important. Looking at where the direction is. over the eyes a little. So I'll just go back in with the black.
an amazing texture that adds. I'm just going to sharpen this again. Not as much light as I thought they was. Sharpen that again. So that does happen with when you sand paper. You might have to sharpen your pencil a little more than usual.
Okie dokie. Now, I'd like to use a little bit of the the Warm Grey 2, number 271. Just add darker than that. So we'll use the Warm Grey 5, number 274. that'll do and then on the these feathers here These feathers are very black. Beautiful. And then some of the burnt ochre, number 187. Uh, just these feathers here. Okay, so we, we don't want to go too overboard with the pencil details, so we'll leave it at that for the pencils. get back into the the pan pastels so I, I really like the face the way it is so I'm gonna leave it just like that and now we want to work on these these feathers all around the place so I think I'm gonna Just blending some of these pencil strokes. Use the flat end of the brush. And 
Okay. Now, okay, so use the black and the yellow ochre extra dark and go on the in-between areas of some of these feathers. Uh, darken them up. Choose this one. It almost looks like a star or a cross. Wonderful. Now we'll use some of the orange shade. Bring in some of those warm tones. Some of the feathers. It's just in some of the areas. Just warming up some of these feathers. Keeping it super simple. Because this is a beginner's drawing, so we don't want to go too crazy with the details. Some black and um, yellow ochre extra dark just on this end bit here.
and then gray. What? And then I use some of the colorless blender. Just to smooth that out more. Beautiful, I like it. So this wing over here, uh, I'll just use the orange shade. Now I'm going to use this applicator sponge with the uh, yellow ochre extra dark and create square like patterns in a sense. creating more texture there and then we would like to use um, I think I'll use the flat one with a bit of the uh, yellow ochre extra dark as well and then we've got some other patterns here
and just add more texture. Now it's just finishing touches. We want to see uh, if there's something else that needs a bit more blending. So we'll use the colorless blender. Uh, we'll sort of just make sure that some of these areas are flowing nicely. some of the white fix this up a bit more the white more. Especially down here. and add more of the uh, yellow ochre extra dark. Great. <laughs> I think that's it. That is our owl. Um, so something that I'm thinking I, I really want to do is I think I want to bring a sort of stencil over it a little bit. But I don't know if I'm going to make it look too busy because we already have a lot of a lot going on here. So I'm thinking I might just leave it. As is. What I will do is I'm going to take some black and just help 
create the shape of these feathers over the top here a bit more. Yes, there we go. That's a bit better. black to create some mm -hmm. these textures here as well. Let's let's go further with so using the black go a bit more further this way with these feathers. I think I'm going to take my green pencil, my earth green yellowish, number 168. Put that smidge of green in there. blend that. Just take a pan pastel and help blend that in. Wide coverage on a, a big surface area and I'm just noticing now so I'm going to use some of the raw umber number 180 and I just want to add a bit of more texture over here. you are <laughs> looking at where you're working that you've gotten everything in that you want and then some advice that I usually like to give my uh, students is that once you finish the piece step away for a day and then come back the next day and then 
see how you um, feel about it and then you can add any extra bits and pieces that you want from there and um, you can build it up a bit more that way so um, yeah but if, if you've got you know this sort of results um, then, then that's enough so you have to decide how far you want to take something do you want it to be very realistic if you do then you can keep working this um, a lot slower until you do get that very strong realistic result you can you can make this look hyper realistic but um, usually I do try and get as realistic as I can in my drawings but this is a beginner one so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go there I don't want to over complicate things if it's unnecessary but it's good to step away for a day and then come back and see if you want to add any further details so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to sign it. And since it's a big piece, I can add a nice big signature. Oops. So I think I'm going to add it on the left here. I need to just change the my body angle. rundown of everything that we did we used a set of 10 pan pastels and we used some of the soft applicator sponges and just a handful of pencils and then we use this owl reference which is from iStock photos so you can purchase this reference if you want to give it a go um, or there's a lot of other places where um, like morgfile.com or pixabay or paint my photo those sort of websites give you access to free royalty free photos and then you can use them uh, to do this as well um, see <laughs> I'm just going to keep adding a few. Since I added some of these textures on that side, now I want to add a little bit on this side as well. And all we did is that we observed our reference and sort of worked out where the placement of the eyes are going to be. And then once we had the placement of the eyes in, it was easy to do the rest. We sort of just flowed from there. And my owls stretched out a bit more to fill the paper um, so you can sort of make it fade into nothing like I did or you can leave that part sort of out of it but it's totally up to you what you do and I think I actually want to make this wing go higher up so I want to make this wing go higher up so I'm just going to add some white and put that in there you see it's so easy like if you want to change something you there's so much room for error with pan pastels because you can just keep working over the top until you get the result that you want so this this stuff's pretty epic <laughs> i like that more i think i think i do yes so that is the beginner's owl tutorial using 10 pan pastels um did we use all of them we did we used all of them. Um, so we used 10 pan pastels, we used the soft applicator sponges, we used the Faber-Castell polychromos pencils, and uh, and we used the UART 400 sanded paper. And that's it. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. There's not much more I can say other than what we sort of we went through together um, already. And here's some areas I could use some texture. <laughs> Okay, I gotta stop now but like <laughs> this this is normal this is the sort of thing that's gonna happen when you start uh, doing things like this you you you're gonna start naturally becoming more and more observant you're gonna see more notice more and you'll be able to put more things down so that is the beginners owl tutorial thank you so much for watching and i look forward to doing the workshop with a, a few of you guys that are local and um, for those of you that are just watching this online and trying this um, online let me know if you give it a go and if you have any questions i'll be happy to answer them for you 
and all my details will be in the description and I thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!